Welcome, welcome back to Couch Collectibles. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. In today's video, we're going to be talking about error coins that you should be looking for in your pocket change. We're also going to look at some other different error coins as well that are worth money. And don't forget, we got a $5 off coupon all month on couchcollectibles.com. If you guys do purchase a product, you are also entered for the monthly giveaway. So let's hop into it and check out these rare coins that are worth money. All right, so first up here is a 19 43 Philadelphia minted Jefferson nickel now this nickel is the silver design nickel so in 1943 nickel it is supposed to be 35% silver however this nickel was actually struck on a one cent planchet and I'm pretty positive that this was struck on a steel planchet from 1943 if I'm not mistaken now you can see there on the reverse of the coin the E pluribus unum there at the top is being cut off because the whole nickel design can't fit on this one cent planchet and then you do see the p mint mark there that does show that it is a legitimate 1943 philadelphia minted nickel design however it just was not struck on the right nickel planchet it struck on a penny planchet but that will give it value and it doesn't have a mint stated grade it is graded at about uncirculated 50 so not the highest grade in the world but also not the lowest now this coin here sold for over $3,100. Sticking with the nickels for a second, this one's pretty cool. It didn't sell for thousands of dollars. However, I thought it was interesting because it doesn't have a high grade. It's graded at about uncirculated 58. It is a 1952 Jefferson nickel and it just has a broken planchet. And that is actually a mint error taking place on this nickel coin here so because of that mint error this coin sold for over 185 dollars not a bad find for a 1952 nickel moving right along to a 1966 silver kennedy half dollar of course 1966 this is a 40 percent silver kennedy half dollar and man it just looks broken up beat up damaged However, it is a mint error that's taking place on this coin. It's called a lamination error that's taking place on the obverse on the front of the coin. So that's what's going to give it some value. It does have some environmental damage as listed there on the coin slab by NGC. However, this coin still sold for over $90. So nothing too crazy, but still a $90 coin. Moving right along, now you guys see the reverse of this coin. This is a bicentennial quarter. You see that there's nothing wrong there on the reverse of the quarter. However, if we go here to the front of this Washington quarter, the obverse has been struck through. So that is a mint error. Now, typically for this type of error, strike through errors, you can see that the coin design looks really, really faded, especially around the rim of the coin in some cases. And you can really see that there pretty much on the whole design except for the really top there where it says Liberty that didn't get too affected as comparison to the rest of the coin however this coin sold for over two hundred and twenty dollars so over two hundred and twenty dollars for a 25 cent coin all right this is a simple error to look for I'm not gonna explain too much on this it's a simple error to look for on any denomination of coins I found penny planchets just like this Basically, this is a Kennedy half dollar with no design on it. Means that it is a blank planchet. And this one is actually 40% silver, so that means that it was made anywhere from 1965 to 1970. Now, this coin here sold for over $175 because of that error. So always be on the lookout for blank planchets on any denomination of coinage in your pocket change or when you're coin roll hunting. Next up is the Roosevelt Dime. We can see here on the reverse, it looks perfectly fine, like there's no error, but that's why you always flip over your coins and search your pocket change, because this is a result of a capped die error taking place on the obverse on the front of this Roosevelt Dime. Now you can see that there in the image display pretty clear. I've actually found a capped die coin, capped die penny. I actually made a video of that on my channel in a roll and you won't believe it i found it in the same roll as an indian head penny that will probably never happen again to me in my life but somehow i got lucky that day and it actually did but this dime here sold for over 130 dollars all right next up is the famous 1965 roosevelt dime that has been struck on a silver 
Planchet. Now I have mentioned this coin in previous videos, so you really want to pay attention to this part. The 1965 dime is not silver. The 1965 dime is supposed to weigh 2.27 grams. So a non-silver dime, which is what the 1965 is supposed to be, is supposed to weigh 2.27 grams. Now the 1964, which is a 90% silver dime, would weigh 2.5 grams. 2.5 grams for silver, 2.27 for non-silver, so keep that in mind. Don't forget if you guys do want to weigh your coins, you can get a coin scale from couchcollectibles.com. Link is down in the description of every video. So if you come across the 1965 dime and you think that it's silver, weigh it. It's supposed to weigh 2.27 grams if it's not silver. And if it weighs 2.27, then you just got a regular dime that's pretty much worth a dime. That's it. But if you do have a 1965 that looks silver and it weighs 2.5 grams or maybe a little more in some cases, maybe a little less because it's a wore down coin and there's less silver on it or whatever. I have a whole video on my channel explaining how to post images of your coins and where to sell them. So be sure to check out that video. Now this dime here, because of that error, this 1965 was struck on a silver planchet. A silver dime planchet. Now it's supposed to be struck on a clad planchet. However, that's why this is called a mint error. It's an error. It wasn't supposed to happen, wasn't supposed to be on a silver coin. So this coin here sold for over $8,600. $8,000 for that dime. All right, guys, you know what to do. Subscribe in the middle, click the videos to the left of me, and until tomorrow, I will see you all in the comment section below. This is Couch Collectibles, and this is where. I disappear.